She was also a board member of the Queer Cultural Center and co-founder of our Queer Conversations on Culture and the Arts series. Um, I'm always impressed and uh, delighted to be a, 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 an audience member and a participant from the audience position in um, presentations by these uh, folks. And this is the first time, though, that um, we've had the pleasure of having them present together. And I'm really interested in both the works in progress um, kind of challenge that we've, we've put out. Like, um, I guess I would say that, that um, as I, I told each one of our, our presenters, you know, um, that could mean just about anything, since work is always only already in progress until you die and then it's done. Um, so, it, it, you know, there, there are works at, at various phases of, of, of evolution and development and the connections, I think, one of the things that presenting publicly um, in, in a forum like this with people who are really interested in how work gets to be uh, what it becomes seen as, you know, so there might be a phase of development that you, you know, that, that feels complete, like, um, like a film in, in Tina's case, or a publication, or a, an exhibition, but it, it's, it's, it's part of a large, it's always part of a larger arc of, of development that is the self, um, and, um, it, and, and its meaning also changes in relation to the things that come next, as well as the things that, that came before. So, uh, different people are in different places with what um, their current projects are. Some here are, are really just at the beginning of something that looks new, even though um, speaking strictly for me, it's always the same old thing. Uh, just, you know, um, expressed in, 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 in new ways and, um, and framed in new constellations of ideas and references. So some, some of the work is um, uh, probably like for Jeanette, it might be the first time that you've talked um, publicly yes. about, about this. Um, on, on the other hand, Tina's had the opportunity this year to talk uh, uh, quite a bit about um, about looking for Jiro, but um, it's still in a it's it's still part of a of a of a, of a larger gesture move, moving forward that's sort of building um, in this direction at the same time as it's going deeper and deeper with each um, you know it, turn of the screw. Um, so um, and for for Duane and, and and Adrian, I know that in when we were talking about your presentation, you were wondering sort of, well, what are the connections um, 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 uh, among the, the different things that have happened to me since um, I got out of this place? And, um, uh, and, and I think sometimes you, 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 you don't ask yourself that. And maybe it's a good thing not to ask yourself self that too often. But every once in a while to kind of have the opportunity to, you know, in the eyes of other people to see that there is a kind of coherence, um, that it all does belong uh, uh, to you and with you and, um, and um, to the others to whom you, you, you offer it um, in, in, a, in a way that, 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 that makes um, um, a, a kind of whole sense. Um, and, and, and for Duane, um, um, has been really, before he came here, um, he was uh, really working with the same, some of the same issues and, and his um, curiosity and engagement uh, with, with a certain set of ideas and practices that are um, both artistic and are, are not both, but are artistic, um, spiritual, and um, political. Um, those things kind of crystallized into an MA uh, thesis in, in this context but um, are, are, are really ongoing in uh, the, the, the kinds of organizing um, that he's done and the kinds of work that he did all along and has continued to do um, after, after leaving here. So um, I don't know whether for you um, they're, they're, the challenge of coherence is as great as it is for some someone like me. I, I come out of a 
background of you know spending a, a, a large part of my professional life hammering nails, um, and sometimes I you know I'm asked like, well, you know, then what happened? You know, what happened to you? Right? Um, how did you you know start uh, going to school and studying art history? And 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 so I've had to kind of answer that question a lot of times, and it's it's. Uh, uh, it's it's getting easier at CCA because of being in a in a world of makers um, who are also thinkers. Um, that it doesn't seem as strange here as it seems some places. So I'm 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 kind of grateful for that. And I think in a way all of us have something of that. You know, not seeming strange here um, in ways that we might seem strange in other places. And that's part of. What, what we share, and that's part of the excitement about um, about our work and about the work that we we do, <coughs> that, you know, encouraging each other to kind of not make always make perfect sense, um, and to be um, and to be, you know, to to, to play um, on on a, um, on a full keyboard um, available to us at any given moment. So, um, without further ado. I want to do is thank the Visual and Critical Studies Department for inviting me back and giving me the opportunity to, to sit here in this room again because a lot of the revelations that I had about my thesis and my work, you know, came actually in this room while somebody was talking and uh, at a certain point, uh, Tirza had mentioned the work of Arjuna Paderai and because of that, uh, I ended up pointing this term, Afroscape based upon uh, some of the works, uh, some of the, the, the critical theory that he had, had put forth. And you know, he had he'd come up with the terms technoscapes and ethnoscapes, things of that nature. And uh, it, it made me think about space and its connectivity in different ways, the, the ways it were, was uh, uh, affected. And I, I started to realize that the, the viewpoints that I had about Africana studies and what some people call um, centricity um, is really connecting the diaspora and a long continuum of cultures in certain ways that manifest itself in, uh, in certain ways uh, all across the globe. And so looking at it as a, as a landscape, I began to think of it as uh, a, a landscape that looks different depending upon which way you view the landscape. One of the things that get, uh, one of the critiques that gets leveled at uh, Afrocentricity and Africana studies is that it oftentimes essentializes things or doesn't take into consideration the, the individual uh, uh, experience. Well, I wanted to address that in some way by utilizing this Afroscape notion that the landscape would look different from different uh, viewpoints. So, the, I'll get you, I'll try to move this along quickly because uh, one of the things that I need to cl uh, clarify is what it was I was doing with my thesis. So, <laughs> so the, the Afroscape thesis is centered around, to a certain degree, this image right here, which was a, a ground drawing that I did in East Oakland at a visual for an, off, an artist named Casper Banjo that was shot uh, in 2008 by a, a cop in Oakland at close range with an assault rifle. This is a 70-year-old uh, epileptic senior citizen. It was claimed that he had a replica of a gun in his hand. Casper Banjo was uh, not just a, a, a community leader of some sorts and uh, uh, an elder statesman in, our, in the black artist community, but uh, also uh, someone that's known as a, a very gentle figure. And so uh, everybody was very emotional about this thing happening. And in the day of this, uh, this morning, morning uh, uh, ritual in East Oakland, I thought of this image, it came to me, and so I, I took a piece of chalk and went that evening to the, the morning ritual, and I chalked it onto the ground, and I left. And uh, uh, a local uh, a local 
journalist named Wanda Sabir took a photo of it. And I saw that about 24, 48 hours later. And it seems that all the artists and people that had gathered around it had put these candles and things of that nature around this, this ground drawing that I did. Now, the ground drawing itself is done in the form of what is called a punto piscado, or a drawn point. This is an African-Brazilian uh, uh, ground drawing that's done in ceremonies called umbanda, uh, or, or uh, for a religion called umbanda. And when these ground drawings are made, they designate the presence of an entity, usually an ancestral entity. And there are thousands of these uh, uh, drawings that are done. And they keep growing year by year. There's so many of them now that they're pretty much you know, uncountable. And so <clears throat> this thing occurred to me, and I put it, put it down. But the manner in which I did this was uh, the confluence of a couple of different images. These arrows that are facing around in counterclockwise motion are reflective of a, a Congo uh, uh, cosmology that reflects the notion of the, the movement of ancestors. I want you to keep that in mind as I go through some of the installation work. And so the bottom half, the bottom half of the design here, where you see this sort of banjo image, is what is called the alma. And below this image, uh, below this line right here, the realm of the ancestors, this would be birth, this would be life, this would be death, and this is dwelling in the land of the ancestors. Uh, oh, yeah, wow. Technology. So, I'm backtracking just slightly. Um, these images overlap because this is a drawing uh, that I began actually before I came to CCA to study and was uh, investigating some of the some of the Punto Escado ground drawings. This image right here, this area right here, is a Punto Escado. This Punto Escado is for uh, an entity called Eshu Sechitumas, or Eshu of the Seven Tombs. Eshu is a Yoruba figure from out of West Africa that is a gate opener and someone that transitions spirits in and out of uh, various states. The drawing was done beforehand, but these parts right here were done for a show called Pass Forward, African Spirituality and Contemporary Black Art. And that was just about uh, a year or so ago. Um, it, the, I, did a cat, I wrote a catalog essay for this exhibit. It was done at the African American Culture Complex here, right here in uh, San Francisco. And inside that essay, too, was uh, one of my thesis advisors, um, Jackie, Jackie Francis, who was also very influential in uh, helping the curator, Dimitri Broxton, bring this thing to realization with a number of other uh, artists in the area. And so I just wanted to show you again up close this image right in here. Okay. Right. This image is uh, from a ceremony which looks like it could have been in Haiti somewhere or uh, in the Caribbean in some, some place, but it's actually um, right here in San Francisco. And it's in the Mission District, it was at a park. And this happened maybe just about uh, a year or so ago, two, or two years ago now. I wrote a piece for the open space online publication for the San Francisco Museum of Modern Art with a few photographs of this particular uh, ceremony. This is Mambo Florencia Pierre and her daughter, Jeanine Saints Juice in the Mission District. And I'm basically just going over how the notion of the ground drawing, uh, the African diaspora ground drawing, which in Haiti is called a bebe, which is what she's making here with this cornmeal. It's sometimes made with cornmeal, with powder, or uh, rather with flour, or sometimes with gunpowder. These things are all coming together in different ways in the installation pieces that I've done in collaboration with other artists alone and in collaboration with uh, other artists. And so I got a chance to talk to her and to her, her daughter uh, as well about some of the bebés in the process and spent the entire day there uh, in this, this ceremony. Now, how many people have heard of the musician Fela Ransom Kuti from Nigeria? OK, great, great. So also at the African American Art and Culture Complex, there was a, a show curated by an artist named Malik Sineperu. Uh, based upon uh, uh, the music 